the hardest, biggest, and craziest food challenges of 2022, everybody. Welcome to this year's summary. So in this video, we're going to literally look at the craziest challenges, the challenges which are literally impossible, the challenges which have pushed me to absolute failure. I'm also going to include some extra tidbits in this video for those who are interested, such as like, what does your workout schedule look like, Joel? And at the end, I'll actually include some extra footage that I've accumulated throughout the year, including some of my crazy adventures in California where I went to the uh, Calaveras, I saw like the great big redwoods. I went to Yosemite and just some like other bits and pieces, maybe some from cruise ships, etc. which I don't know if they made them in a video. I don't think they did. Same as from the UK, but you're gonna get to see them at the end. So without further ado, let's dive into the craziest, biggest, and hardest food challenges of 2022 where we did probably about i don't know if i had to guess off the top of my head maybe like 80 food challenges we did a lot this year we did a lot of traveling i'll tell you more about that at the end of the video also all right so to start i think we need to kind of categorize these so i'm going to start with challenges which pushed me to the absolute edge were absolutely the hardest craziest things because i decided to double them so let's start with that and we'll get into the other ultimate food challenges later on. First challenge that I am going to touch on is the world famous man versus food ice cream challenge at the San Francisco Creamery, um, which is actually ironically not in San Francisco, but it is nonetheless in the area. So this challenge, while it is a giant, it's about a gallon of ice cream, I decided to double it, no one had ever doubled it before. What sucked about it is well, as you kind of maybe saw, they actually made my second one substantially bigger than my first. And some people were, you know, as I posed the question, I left it open. I was like, did they leave it? Was it, was it made bigger? And some people were like, oh, maybe it just melted. Bull crap. This second version of this challenge was so much bigger than the first. Um, so, you know, the first one was a gallon, the second one was at least a gallon and a quarter, so like five liters or, you know, five quarts or whatever you want to call it. So, long story short, that was a lot, a lot of ice cream. This was a very, very big challenge. And so not only was it difficult because I was trying to eat like over two gallons of ice cream, which no one should ever do. Again, there's a reason no one has tried to double this. But I was so, so, so cold. I was freezing, absolutely freezing, even though I had a sweater. It was a reasonable temperature outside. Um, but yeah, long story short, it was very cold. And then the worst thing is that stuff just started flowing through me. It was the only thing I ate that day. And I tell you what, by the time I was, you know, even, let's say, halfway through the second one, man, I was clenching that bottom end of mine so hard. I was really trying not to have to let's just say it was i wasn't feeling good so yeah definitely that one makes it to the list of literal 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 one of the hardest challenges i've ever attempted next we are going to tony's butt buster challenge in tony's butt shack now this was here in hallowayville illinois um so the original challenge seven pounds again basically undefeated uh it was only defeated i think twice prior to me doing it somehow i got the bright idea to actually try and double this not smart joel not smart i just love barbecue and i wondered if i could do it so on the actual challenge like itself originally you had a whole bunch of brisket you had ribs mac and cheese um a meatloaf sandwich pulled pork anyway so i did the one challenge um quite not easily but i did it in about we'll say i don't know uh maybe it was about 13 minutes or so so that was great then they brought out the second challenge so this was a time it was so much better in theory than in actual practice before i continue though i need a drink i have myself some ice cold caffeine free diet pepsi i'm not sponsored all those pepsi hit me up if you want to sponsor me but comment down below everybody let me know the last thing that you drank. We're getting serious, so I need some of this magical soda in my life. So now this was not a butt buster for me at the time being, unlike the ice cream challenge. Um, it was not, you know, just an incredible difficulty from the amount and also because I was clenching. 
this challenge, I was not clenching, but I was more clenching, I guess, my stomach, not my bottom end. This was so much food. It was very delicious. The fact that I, I think the only thing that actually saved me in being able to do this challenge probably um, in the time limit, which I believe was 45 minutes each. So, I mean, I'm sure they probably would have gave me 90 minutes if I wanted to, whatever. But um, the only way I knew I was going to be able to do this is the way they gave me the one challenge first and the second challenge while it was still hot. So because of that, I think that was the only way I did this. This was so much food. Um, a key thing for you guys, this is the first tidbit of secret information that you're getting rewarded with for watching. Anytime I eat more than 30 minutes, this is something, like, that is difficult. The one exception is maybe if it's something like crab legs where it just takes so long to get into. But if you see Joel eat for 30 minutes or more, that is a hard and difficult challenge. Somehow, some way, some people cannot like tell when I'm struggling. Look for the breathing, look for deep breaths, look for mouth breathing, etc. But yeah, first tidbit. So the butt buster, long story short, uh, we were technically able to do it in what was about, you know, almost 40 minutes. Um, it was incredibly difficult. I was not having an easy time and I really did not know if I was going to be able to finish this challenge. Now, while this very well could be the most, we'll call it, difficult challenge of the year, one of the most difficult I have ever done, perhaps, it, well, and undoubtedly, the most amount of solid foods I have ever eaten. This challenge technically was so difficult because I doubled it. So while I think arguably it could be considered the hardest challenge I've ever done, maybe ever, ever, or at least one of them, I asked you guys feedback on a live stream the other day. I said, hey, what do you guys think about doubling challenges? And what do you think about, you know, times where I ate two challenges and almost failed? And you guys said you felt those were different than just independent challenges. So because that is still worth mentioning, because this was absolutely insane. If you haven't seen this video, you should definitely watch it. I'll link all these down below. But we were talking about the Harry's Breakfast Challenge. So this was a traditionally, it's an eight pound breakfast challenge. My good friend, Miss Leah Shakiver and I went and did this while I was in the United Kingdom. So this is a full English breakfast, including like, literally it had fried bread. Yes, literal bread deep fried in oil. It's a thing in the UK. We had buttered bread, then we had toast. So we had like 12 pieces of bread on each challenge, which was insane. We had multiple eggs, we had bacon, we had hash browns, we had French fries, we had beans, we had tomatoes or tomatoes. Uh, we had black pudding, um, just so much, like, like it was so much stuff, sausages and everything, hash browns, just crazy. Fun fact, the way they cook these eggs, they like basically, it was really interesting, a fried egg in the UK, I guess, is basically submerged in oil. Like it's almost like deep, I call it like deep frying an egg versus here and that I, I'm at least more familiar with North America. We throw it on like pretty much just a hot griddle, little no oil or anything on it and just so. That was probably the biggest interesting cooking thing I found from the UK. And it happened a couple times, I had eggs a couple times. Long story short. Why this was so tough? Because it was an absolutely absurd amount of food. It was very, very delicious. This was another time where the only way, again, I was at all potentially, well, somehow, I, long story short, I, get, I did do it. Well, I did do it. And the way I did that is solely because, again, we brought them out like one after the other. Um, I didn't go into this intending to do two. It just kind of happened where I did the one um, in about, I don't know, let's say 20 something minutes um, out of the one hour time limit. And then they kind of had this extra challenge there and they kind of presented to me as a joke. Um, kind of like, oh, hey, here you go. And I was like, okay, well, I'll try it. And I did. And let's just say I was so close to throwing up near the end. I mean, I have this ice on the back of my neck. For those who are wondering why um, ice on the back of the neck, it is a, and I explained this in the video, but people don't watch or listen apparently, um, it helps kind of combat nausea. If you kind of can shock your system, kind of make your body forget about the 
you know, what's making you nauseous. So I am standing up, I am hunched over, my pants are undone, and this is just the most basically uncomfortable thing ever. I am, I have so, I've packed so much in my abdomen that I have pressure on both ends. I'm just absolutely, literally dying. Oh, this was again one of the closest, you know, I, I don't know what you call it, like not even, it's not proper to say a, what's that called, like a flag finish, what, I don't know, what are you going to call this? Anyway, long story short, in like 50 whatever minutes out of a 60 minute time limit, I did complete the second challenge and this was just absolutely idiotic. I would not recommend it. Staff were awesome, the food was good, but it was painful to watch. It's painful for me to go through and I blew up my side. I've had this ongoing side injury, which was, I just messed it up so bad that day. Um, but yeah, about 50 minutes, 10 seconds, I completed it. And oh boy, I tell you what, there was nothing holding anything back after that. <sighs> Delicious. Very good. All right, where were we? Here's the next tip of information. Some people say, hey Joel, that's me. Why do you drink Diet Coke? Or why do you drink Diet Soda? Um, you know, in a challenge specifically. Well, it's just a different flavor. There is no tip. There is no real technique. You can drink water. Often I have my little flavor packets like Hawaiian Punch or Crystal Light or whatever they are. I just like the flavors. And in a challenge, admittingly, they can be used as a bit of a strategic move because if you're sick of one flavor, adding in some other flavor can help you kind of eat a little bit more slash get a little more food down, potentially. Although some people it doesn't work at all. For me, I just like flavored beverages in general. I drink a lot of them. Um, in fact, I would say I drink probably way too many flavored beverages. All right. Now that we've gone over the challenges, which were incredibly hard because we doubled them and that's why they were the craziest, hardest, some of the like most ridiculous challenges of the year. Let's go into, um, really, it's only the one challenge I'm going to mention um, in regards of like being so, so, so difficult because I did two. Now, while there were a good handful of challenges this year that um, the second one was very difficult, this one has to top it. So this is where I was at Trisis, which was a African restaurant in San Antonio, Texas. I'm first gonna start by saying, this challenge was massive. This is one where the camera does not do it justice. So when I first heard about the challenge, and I was like, oh, that can't be that bad. Um, so I, again, I did one prior, going into this one already full. So I think it was what was, I heard, you know, six chicken legs, and then three cups of rice or whatever, and then we had the sweet plantains. So the thing is, which I didn't realize, these chicken legs were honestly the biggest chicken legs I have ever seen in my life. Like, this was not a chicken, I, I swear. The only way I actually believe this is because I actually had chickens growing up, and one time I had a chicken who weighed 30 pounds, I kid you not, he was a monster, um, it was like, I literally, he was meant to be a meat chicken, but I kept him as a pet because he was just so outstandingly huge. Like he was the size of a turkey, guys, a 30 pound chicken. He walks like this. He couldn't bend his legs. He couldn't jump. He was literally a genetic freak. And he died like, I don't know, probably a year old of a heart attack. Kid you not. And that's the only reason I believe these are actually chicken legs. Because these things, this is my fist. Put, make a fist right now. A chicken leg is normally like maybe half of a fist. This thing was probably at least the size of my fist, if not bigger. These chicken legs were giant. So there were six massive legs, arguably the biggest legs I've ever seen. And then the three cups of rice were like a, it wasn't a, like a 250 ml cup, it was these massive portions. So I would say probably it was like 10 pounds of, or not 10 pounds, it's probably 10 cups of rice in total, at least, jollof rice, which was very delicious. And then these chicken. Shout out the flavor. I loved this challenge, it was absolutely delicious. But while I figured it'd be about five pounds, this thing was probably more like 
a solid, solid, solid eight pounds, maybe even nine, we'll say eight, whatever. And so this was a challenge, which again, remember how long we said, if I eat pat to a certain point, how difficult it is. Here we are with like 30 minutes. I'm still not even done. It was just, I was absolutely dying. I'm not gonna lie. I don't know if you can tell, but I had to push the seat back, extend my abdomen over like this, Basically the same thing as standing up and it was in the way I'm munching this. It's just taking me so long. I'm having to use flavored beverages again. That did help me in this case, but I mean for this challenge to take, you know, almost 40 minutes, I literally thought I was going to blow on every which end. This was nuts. One of the hardest challenges. Like I said, this was this and it, man, this, this was, arguably maybe the like i thought i was going to fail this 100 percent. i thought i was going to fail this yeah it was tough but shout out that chicken that jollof rice especially that chicken that was the like most memorable chicken i've had of the year it was super delicious so i really like the african stewed chicken all right now we're officially into the challenges which were just insanely difficult the hardest of the year by themselves not because i did one prior not because i tried to double it these are the ultimate craziest challenges of 2022 undoubtedly and these will go by a little quicker i think so first is going to be a actual cheesesteak challenge i did at a place called nyc halal eats this is in the uh, Michigan, uh, Detroit, Michigan area. Technically, it is a bit north in Troy. So this was insane. Again, this was a challenge. I anticipated it to probably be about like, let's say eight pounds, maybe max nine. And this thing was 13 or 14 pounds. So if you can't tell, look at the size of these freaking cheesesteaks. We had this big chicken sandwich, um, which was like probably two pounds we had a cheese steak a massive cheese steak which they had like matzo sticks and all this stuff in it minimum probably two pounds then we had the three cheese steaks which are probably about like a pound and a half to two pounds so anyway and then this huge shawarma fry dish these gyros euros whatever you want to call them so like i said this thing was at minimum 13 pounds minimum minimum 13 pounds um it was kind of a food where as it sat it definitely was not easy to eat next tidbit often by the time i actually get to eat food challenges the food is cold or at least like room temperature or like slightly above room temperature i guess i should say which i love warm food trust me i would much rather eat warm food but by the times we get the challenge hits the table it's probably at least probably 15 minutes um for me to like do photos and then actually uh, kind of get ready to start. And that's if everything goes well. There's lots of time, unfortunately, you know, in a kitchen, in a restaurant, they, um, you know, let's say they, it's a burger and a fries. They'll make the fries and they'll sit there for like five minutes while they finish up decorating this burger. And I'm like, is there any way we can make them done at the same time? Because I still have many minutes of setup and prep and photos when it hits the table. So there's your next tidbit. So anyway, getting into this challenge, it was good. It was um, delicious. The bread was definitely had this real crust to it. It was definitely a huge jaw workout. Um, and this was an absurd amount of food. Again, going with that 30 minutes, here we are guys, we're like 20 some minutes in and already I, if you cannot tell by my mannerisms, how much I'm drinking, the way I'm my posture, the way I'm holding my breath and how much I'm having to chew and stuff, I am already dying. I'm dying at this point. I am so full. Again, I, I have probably already consumed 11 pounds, 10 pounds of this, and I have a euro, some scraps, and these fries left, which of course the fries are gonna be ice cold, but I left them near the end because eating a cold cheesesteak, like I said, the way, especially the way they were with all that crisp bread versus eating cold fries, probably the cold fries, which should have been soaked in sauce would be easier. Long story short, like I said, 30 minutes, this is very, very difficult. And in fact, out of the one hour time limit, this took me like 40 some minutes, 42 minutes. And this is before my injury. This is when I was still in really good eating shape. But I mean, you can tell the way I'm breathing. My eyes closed. I am like 
you know, uh, how long this is taking me to swallow to clear my mouth. I was absolutely dying. So yeah, that was a challenge. Um, very difficult. And that one was back, I think in January. So that was like crazy way to start the year off. Next is a challenge, which was very difficult because of a short time limit. So this was at uh, Bullseye Burgers in Yakima, Washington. This place is awesome. They have so many different food challenges. And this was their giant quesadilla challenge, which was new at the time that I attempted it. So it was, I believe, four massive, four or five massive quesadillas kind of all stacked on top of each other. Um, this is, is one vi uh, video image, whatever, which the photo, the video, whatever, camera does not do it justice. These things were very, very large. So yeah, and the difficulty was only had 10 minutes to complete in order to get that free meal and that cash prize. So there was, I mean, it was, it was honestly, this was the time it was cooked perfect. The food was, they did it 100% right. It was all done at the same time. I was actually eating this hot or warm, which was amazing, amazing. So, and I think if any of those things like did not, were not in play, like I had the food cold, etc., I probably would have failed this. Again, there was so much cheese in this, which definitely kind of made it a little chewy, gummy, etc. But the meats were cooked perfect. The quesadillas themselves, like the tortillas were nice. Um, and I really liked it. But it was very, very difficult because you only had 10 minutes. And some people watch this and are like, oh, Joel, easy, guys. I was going like basically full speed and it took me eight and a half minutes. So that was very difficult. All right, next. Now we're getting into the ones which like are really, really, really like, I'm, well, I'll, every one of these, I almost failed. Every one of these was insane. So here we got the truly impossible CN Tower Burger at the Burger Factory. So there's lots of locations around, but I did this at a location in um, like Oakville slash Mississauga, Ontario, so the greater Toronto area. This was stupid. Why? Because it was so big. This was like, again, about 14 pounds of food. It was um, massive, like, there was, I don't remember, like, something like nine or 10 pounds of beef. We had chicken, we had beef bacon, we had multiple buns, of course, some veggies, sauces. Then we had these giant skewers, which was like a whole chicken stick thing, jalapeno poppers, and chicken tenders, or I already said that, but like a potato, a spiral potato. So this was insane. A lot of people said, hey Joel, why do you have a stack of plates? So long story short, this burger was so tall that I had to use like a different chair. Okay, so the chair that would normally go for the bench or the whatever I was sitting at, if I sat on it, um, I was like too low or whatever. So I had to like sit on a high chair and then to make up for the gap between the table and the burger I had to make a stack of trays if that makes sense anyway and this thing was actually like with those skewers it was about five feet tall without the skewers obviously it wasn't five feet tall but this was I don't know how tall insanely big so this was ridiculous we had one hour to complete it um, the burger itself was great they call them like a smash burger I wouldn't call it a smash burger it's just like a griddled burger but it was a good quality meat um, all the ingredients were nice and luckily I got this, well, at least eh, it was somewhat warm, but I gotta say again, remember that time limit? How long does it take? If Joel hits 30 minutes, it is like, and again, you guys understand when I say it was hard, like if I hit 30 minutes of eating, unless it's like crab, it is like an 8.5, 9 out of 10. Um, so by this point, you're like, oh, Joel, look, you're almost done because this thing was absolutely insane. I mean, just the size and the amount of food in this was ridiculous, but I was not done at that point because once I had the burger, I had the spiral potato I took off at the beginning. I had the chicken's fingers I took off at the beginning. Which their chicken was very, very good. I remember that. And I had the jalapeno poppers. So again, how, you know, this took me 45, 46 minutes. And this was, I felt, so full i was you know trying everything not again cl eyes closed definitely there was a lot of pressure things were wanting to you know come out of me and yeah so that was tough so that definitely deserves one if you haven't seen that video that is one to watch that was very very difficult 
Next is actually a challenge, which I'm gonna include. This is a little bit of like, kind of an honorable mention, but I think it's worthwhile. As I've expressed through this video, there are some of you guys out there and I appreciate the, the support. I appreciate the optimism, the hospitality, but sometimes there are videos and I'm like incredibly struggling and somebody's like, oh man, you could do two of those or five of those. I could do that. And if you can do it, good for you. No, I can't. There are some challenges which are so difficult. So here's a challenge which was incredibly difficult and it wasn't necessarily because of the volume, although the volume you had a huge play to do with this. This was like six or seven actual pounds of oysters themselves. Um, and I think with the shells, it was like 20 some pounds something. Somebody did the math for me. But this is a 180, AKA five dozen oyster challenge I did at the uh, Pier 6 in San Leon, Texas. So 180 oysters, of course it's gonna be hard. Of course it's gonna be difficult. Now I've, I've heard people casually say, and I don't know if it's true, but they're like, oh, one time I casually ate eight dozen oysters or something. And if you did, that is a lot. But I tell you what, I love oysters, but going into this, once I was probably like three dozen in, maybe four, I was really starting to struggle. Um, it wasn't just like, I won't call it necessarily flavor fatigue, but it was just like a, I kind of got tired of them. I really liked them normally, but I, even though I had delicious mignonette, delicious horseradish, delicious hot sauces, which absolutely helped me get through, even the lemon, I usually don't like lemon on seafood, I like this a lot. This was incredibly difficult. The oysters, which, you know, again, as they're supposed to be, but they were incredibly cold. If, and I was getting cold, like just the evening. Um, so that made it even harder. But this again, this took me forever. And by the end of it, I was really struggling to get these down. Um, I don't know if I would quite say I was nauseous, but I was definitely getting there. And it took me about 37, 38 minutes. So honorable mention, because this was a challenge which was just incredibly difficult, incredibly hard. And it's not just because of the size. So again, everybody who sometimes will watch a challenge and be like, oh, that's easy, it's not that big. Any challenge of any size can be incredibly difficult. So you gotta take it piece by piece. Last but not least, I think now this was arguably, you know, it's, it's, I think as a standalone challenge, ooh, I don't even know if I can say that. As a standalone challenge, this is possibly the hardest one. I think it probably was the hardest one of the year. This is the $3,000 World's Hottest Chicken Tender Challenge at uh, S&J's Hot Chick. So this was in Dallas, Texas. Basically, long story short, you guys can see on screen, this was ridiculous. Um, they were covered in extract, covered in pepper powder. Um, I was told it was ghost pepper going into it later on. The gentleman, long story short, told me it was a different pepper. I don't need to go into this much more. Long story short, we had uh, what was seven minutes to eat these three chicken tenders, but they were not chicken tenders by the normal standards. These things were like full chicken breasts. I'm talking like, I don't know, a six, maybe eight ounce chicken breast, but then all the batter. So I stripped the batter off them to start. That was kind of my strategy. I, and each um, chicken, like if you see how much batter is actually on this, each chicken piece actually was like a full handful of breading. They were double breaded they were supposed to be. So there's this huge amount of breading on it. And then again, these big chicken strip tender breast things, which were, Massive, I do love big breasts. These are big breasts. Chicken breasts, that is. Um, so yeah, long story short, I stripped it off to eat the chicken first, to save the spice for last. But this stuff was so spicy. There's even a piece of bread there, which was covered in this extract and spicy pepper powder. But I'm trying to eat this. Every time I took a swig of water, I lost $100 in cash. Um, but I am like dying. Uh, everything in my brain, in my body, despite um, the music, despite my determination, it is the, I'm, it's so hard to swallow. It is so spicy. My body is completely freaking out. You can see I'm shaking. And if I did not have such a game plan going into this, if I would have faulted it all from that, I, I would have failed 100%. And at this, I barely, barely, barely completed it. 
I was so numb all in here. Like I was so burning, so numb after this that um, I, I, I couldn't feel anything. Even just the touching that pepper powder on my hands. No, you weren't allowed to wear gloves. They burned for 24 hours after. They burned for 24 hours. And you know how many times I washed my hands? Insane. But yeah, like I said, hardest, craziest, most ridiculous challenge. I actually don't even know if I would do it again um, for the $3,000. Um, I actually don't even know. I don't know if it was worth it. And then in the end, there were supposed to be shoes. I didn't get shoes, but he gave me the extra drink cash instead. And, and I did get the PlayStation. So I appreciate that. Um, and I, yeah, that's pretty much that. So that was very memorable. And I would not recommend eating crazy hot food like that. But anyway, everybody, that's pretty much that. That was uh, the hardest food challenges of 2022. At least I would say. And again, it's really hard to pick one. So I'm not saying those are necessarily in chronological order, but more so, you know, in the order of like hard because we doubled them, hard for uh, eating two back to back, although there's definitely a couple more of those, and then hard because they were an independent food challenge. So as promised though, I did mention I'd throw in some extra clips. So um, shout out the time I went to, um, the grind in Martin, Tennessee. So I flew out of Nashville. And anyway, long story short, um, it was almost the same price to rent a sports car as it was to rent a traditional car. It was only a one day rental. So I rented a Mustang GT, a 5.0, and it was- hey this is what 400 horsepower is a drag mode looks like. It was a lot of fun. Uh, this is a drag mode. Hey everybody, this is what 400 horsepower is a drag mode looks like. <laughs> and that was that was so i usually i usually drive uh very responsibly i drive uh fluently um not aggressively but uh fast sometimes but this was the first time i ever had like a rental car or whatever that i like i i played around with it let's be honest and it just is. listen to this i feel this is almost just like not obnoxious <laughs> And honestly, I think it had a custom or like aftermarket or sports exhaust on it. Like, I don't think it was a standard exhaust because I've seen and heard 5.0s before and this thing was loud. Oh my gosh. But it was really fun. It was uh, bright red. And, and uh, so yeah, that was a, a great time. And I had a whack of fun with that. This is a fun one. So I swear I found the world's biggest cucumber at a Walmart and the Walmart was not selling them like per weight. So it was per unit. So I literally bought a cucumber, which is about the size of a two liter bottle of soda. I bought it just to buy it, but check this out. I am buying this cucumber because it is the biggest cucumber I have ever seen. Look at it in comparison to a two liter bottle of soda. It is literally the size of a two liter bottle of soda. So yeah, like I said, biggest cucumber ever. I mean, good value, I ate it. It didn't taste good, I'm not gonna lie. It actually tasted unripe, if that makes sense, but nonetheless, big cucumber. Now I actually have quite a few clips like this and I was gonna compile them in a video, but I'm not gonna lie guys, there's a lot of times I uh, and a lot of projects I wanna pursue, but I just don't really have the time. Um, so I'm working on you know getting more editors and stuff like that, so hopefully I can have the time. Um, this was really fun actually. One time my good friend Hanan and I, we, had a whole, we got a whole bunch of takeout food. Um, like, buddy, and here we go again just to give you another angle of all the different types of freaking boxes and foods like i said we got lots of different items here and anyway, long story short we had like about 300 dollars worth of takeout food and we went and drove around and gave it to people it was super fun um i really like doing that and there's a lot, some people again are really like, and I, I don't, I don't, I don't, the thing is like, I don't share this stuff because like, I don't need to share it. Um, this is just in my phone and this was a very memorable time because it was like 300 bucks of food. But uh, yeah, it was cool. Long story short, like I said, we just literally drove around and handed food out to people, um, giving it to them and whatever. And it was just, it was a lot of fun. Like I said, it, I, I wanted to kind of make a whole video slash project with it, which like if it would, it would probably be like second 
channel material, if that kind of makes sense. Um, let me know down below if you'd like me to make maybe some more channels and, and whatever. But yeah, long story short, that was really cool. Another fun one, which I like. So I can now officially sing every line in the song Coming Home by City and Color. Um, for those who don't know, it's like, I'm coming, uh, that's really hot. I'm coming home, I'm coming home. Anyway, everything from like, now I've seen a palace in London, a castle in Wales, etc. But like, I've kind of like had that um, as like a checklist in one of the war lines is like, um, well, I've never been to Alaska, which I still haven't, but I can tell you this, I've been to Lincoln, Nebraska, and hell, you know, it ain't worth, shh. Anyway, so I was in Nebraska, I drove all the way to Lincoln, just to essentially stand outside, you know, or stand in Lincoln and say it ain't worth crap. All right, so we're outside the Nebraska State Capitol building in Lincoln, Nebraska, and all I can say about Lincoln, Nebraska is this place ain't worth shit. Shout out city and color. So long story short, um, and that was hilarious because I was in Omaha and it was at least an hour south. And I did this drive at like midnight. <laughs> So I don't think that ever made it anywhere, but yeah. So that was like, an, in retrospect, would I do it again? I don't think so. It was a lot of like, let's say three hours driving in the middle of the freaking night. Um, I got pulled over two or three times that night. Yes, admittingly I was like speeding, but not like recklessly, probably 10 or 20, oh, let's say 10 over, 10, 15. And the streets were dead. I drove literally to about three or 4 a.m. in the morning because I had to go down to Lincoln and back up to somewhere in Iowa. So yeah, but yeah, I got pulled over twice. Um, luckily I got off, they let me go, which was super cool, but yeah, that was insane, so crazy. Um, next one is, I went to, I think this made it in a video, but just as it's right in front of me, um, I went to uh, Sioux Falls. Hey everyone, we made it. Which was super cool. If not familiar, wow, Sioux Falls in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. That was gorgeous, super cool park. Um, this is when I was kind of all in that Midwest area. Um, I'll show you a couple photos here. I don't think, because these general photos don't make it in. So I did make it to um, Minnesota. I made it to Minneapolis, Minnesota. So I got like, you know, pictures with the, the big spoon, um, which is a thing. I got a picture of this big blue chicken. Um, so that was cool. So now these are, I'm 99% sure these did not make it in a video and I don't really know why. I guess maybe I just forgot about them at the time of editing. But anyway, so I was in, you know, um, sunny California, about like the Sacramento area, whatever. And I was driving to Reno, um, which, you know, I can go through like Tahoe. So this was in April. And so and the funny thing is all of a sudden there started to be like snow. And then just like literally within a matter of minutes, you go from like green sunny to this like crazy snow filled wilderness in April in California. So that was like, I don't know, pretty cool. Um, met with some really good friends that we met in Vegas um, in Lake Tahoe. And they briefly kind of showed me around, uh, which was awesome on the way to Nevada onto Reno. And so this is like me and actual Lake Tahoe. And yeah, so that was, that was a lot of, that was fun. It was cool. It was, it was very, very beautiful. It was, you know, cold admittingly. Um, but that was, I think like, I can guarantee that was a piece that for whatever reason never made it. And I don't know if any of these made it in either. If they should have though. Um, this is when I went to go see the uh, like Golden Gate Bridge or Lion Lionsgate, what, I don't know, Golden Gate Bridge, I think it is, um, which is pretty cool. I did this while obviously I was in the Bay Area. This was in April. So I got to see, you know, the, the Bay, the bridge and all that stuff. Again, don't recall if that made it in or not, but you know, and then picture of me and the bridge essentially. Now this next one, I literally have a whole video series of it. Like this could be a five, 10 minute vlog in itself, but I'll show you guys nonetheless. So this one I went to go see the Calaveras. This is the big tree park in Calaveras with the great big redwoods. Well, just like, look how big these trees are. 
these things were the biggest, most monstrous things I've ever seen in my life. Not only just because they were tall, but like, look at the people. This is my cousins. Look at them compared to this tree. Like, it is hard to fathom just how large, you know, these things are until you are beside them. Like, look at me compared to one of these cut down. Like, that tall uh, tree, you know, I'm, I'm 5'11". And that thing is over double my height, um, like in width or whatever you call it, length, I guess. Like absolutely insane. Here's a photo of me and my cousin um, Harry against one of these great big trees. Again, just absolutely monstrous. It's huge, long story short. So yeah, super cool. Well, this one, okay, this is a good photo. Look, look how big, look how big that is. We look like ants next to that big tree. If it'll focus. Look at that. Like, words cannot describe how big these redwoods are in Ca Northern California, and you definitely gotta go check it out. Now, probably last, or at least almost last, this is um, Yosemite. I think now these or some of these made it into a video, so I won't show you much. Um, but this was super cool. Yosemite is gorgeous. You know, there's me in that great big famous glacier path. It's one of the most like, you know, uh, standard or known kind of photos of uh, Yosemite. Uh, one thing I loved about Yosemite and what was absolutely amazing was just the beauty of these rocks uh, like, and how close and magnificent this rock face is. Like all, or at least a lot of the mountains you can are super accessible by the road, or at least with like little, you know, unless you want to take a big hike with little um, effort. So like I literally stopped over and just like went in the water. There's like this little stream water thing and like this freaking mountain face is right behind me. And it was super, super, super cool. So again, would recommend liked this time uh that i had in yosemite um and it was a lot of fun i got like no complaints about that so yosemite was really really cool all right now i actually think this will be the last one again i don't know if this made it anywhere but uh, me and my good friend alessandra in san diego we took this really cool um hiking path thing which was like on these in these little stairs so it's like literally through this rock and you had to like climb these crazy little makeshift ladders um right like you know up this it wasn't a long hike i guess you could say or if you can even call it a hike because i mean we're climbing up a ladder but it was like through this super narrow passageway i felt like i was in like a movie it was like super desert indiana jones climbing through you know these little cracks um which looked like kind of like this like you see that so like you know we're going through in this little path through these uh two rock faces um but yeah that was super fun here's the thing i never made it into a video uh, yet i would like to um shout out to uh, jc and faith our good friends in las vegas um long story short uh we ate balut so i gotta try balut um it was very memorable that is the duck fetuses um you know like cooked duck fetuses, like developed duck fetuses in eggs. It was interesting. Uh, honestly, it wasn't bad though. Uh, it wasn't half as scary as I thought, but mentally it was pretty scary. Um, I don't know, I went to a nightclub, uh, Dreas, we saw the baby also that weekend, um, or that week, whatever it was, so that was pretty memorable. So anyway, there you go, that was a lot of fun. Hopefully you enjoyed. Um, but yeah, guys, so 2022 was a crazy year. I spent um, many, many, many hours, many days, many months on the road. Most I've ever have. But uh, I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you for your likes. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for sharing the videos. It always does help even if you just give a comment down below for the algorithm. Say like, hello, Joel. Always appreciate it. But yeah, guys, thank you so much again. And uh, until next time, of course, happy, healthy, hungry, happy eating. Looking forward to what 2023 brings. Lots of crazy challenges coming your way. And uh, with that, happy new year. And because I totally forgot, but I did promise it. Um, so my workout schedule. So I work out uh, one day on and then do a day of cardio, one day on cardio. So work out about four days a week with weights. 
and then I do cardio essentially every day. I do it about 20 to 30 minutes on my, uh, what I call the workout days, but my weight days with weight training. And then on my uh, quote unquote off days, which days I'm not weight training, I like to do about 40 to 60 minutes of cardio. Hey, guess what? You rock, yes, you rock. Thank you so much for watching the video. I totally appreciate it. I hope you left me a comment down below. I'd love to read them. I hope you also liked that video. Hey, by the way, click my face. You can subscribe. Yes, subscribe. That way you always get my uploads. You won't miss me when I'm in your town. And I also picked two videos for you. Yes, two videos I know you'll love right here. So watch one of those, hit my face. And with that, thank you so much, you rock.